Hi friends, if you're reading or studying the book of Romans, it can be really helpful to have some background information. That's what we're talking about today. Let's get started. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Bruce. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. Okay, so in the book of Romans, first we're going to ask some key questions. First, whom did God use to write the book of Romans? Do you know? Let me know in the comments. The best place to look for this first is in the text of the book itself. Romans 1.1 says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. So because of this, we know that Paul wrote the book of Romans. All right, so who was this Paul guy? <laughs> Paul was really interesting. Um, if you're looking at um, churches and uh, cathedrals and things, you'll know a statue of Paul because he usually has a sword, which is how he was martyred with by the sword a book and a bald head and a really long beard. <laughs> That's how you can recognize Paul in the statues. But who was he? Paul, we heard about his um, conversion in Acts 9, 1 through 30, and you can look for our video about that. He's also the guy that went on several missionary journeys all over um, the Roman world telling people about Jesus. And um, so we're going to look a little bit closer about where he was when he wrote this letter in a moment. But first, when was the book of Romans written? Um, there's a lot of time over history. When was the book of Paul? It fit into that. How does it fit in? The book of Romans was written somewhere between the years of 80, 55 and 80, 58. That means after Jesus. Okay, so the Jesus resurrection was either in 80, 30 or 80, 33. So it was after that. The burning of Rome happened in 80, 64. So it was before that. And it was also before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Um this was a time when um, Nero was emperor of Rome. That means <laughs> it was a very dangerous time to be a Christian in the Roman Empire. Um, Nero slowly got more and more crazy the longer that he was emperor. Um, in fact, several people think that um, he was responsible for the burning of his own capital city, the burning of Rome. Um, we do know that later on in his time he uh really persecuted and targeted christians in fact he blamed the burning of rome on christians as an excuse to really persecute them and a lot of um terrible things happened to people who confessed that they jesus as their savior and lord so it's before all that got really nasty but it was it was coming it, it was definitely coming and it was even starting a little bit this is when paul was writing to this church in rome right where the emperor lived all right, the other important part we need to know is when was this happening in Bible history? Let's look at our song and find out. One, two, one, two, three, four. Creation, Paul, Noah, Tower of Babel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob's 12 sons, Joseph sold to Egypt, famine and slaves, Moses and the Exodus, wilderness commandments, Joshua, promised land, judges and kings, temple and the prophets divided kingdom, sent away to exile, returned for hundred years, shh, Jesus was born, he died and came to life, the Holy Spirit comes and people tell of Jesus, Paul's missionary journeys, Paul's and Christ's return, now I know my Bible history, next time won't you sing along? All right, if you want to practice with that song, you can look for that in our videos, but let's keep going. So during this time, when the book of Romans was written, Paul was on his third missionary journey. This is a map of his third missionary journey, and he was in Corinth. Do you see where Corinth is? Can you find it? I'll give you a hint. It's right there. That's Corinth. It's located in Greece. Okay, so Paul was writing from Corinth to the Romans. Oh, we'll get back to... Did we already say he was writing to the Romans? No, we haven't. So I've given you a hint about what's coming up next. All right. Next question is, what genre is the book of Romans? This affects how we read the book of Romans. Is it a bunch of um, imagery and um, allegory like in poetry or is it something else? So the book of Romans is what we call an epistle. An epistle is a letter sent to a person or a group of people. In fact, more specifically, this is one of the Pauline epistles or the letters of Paul. So let's look at how to find the book of Romans. How do you find Romans? Open your Bible in the middle, then open the right half in the middle, then flip until you get to Romans. 
after the Gospels is Acts. The Acts of the Apostles on their way to Rome to see the Corinthian columns. Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians. All right. So who then was the person who was supposed to receive this letter, this epistle? Who was the original audience? I already gave you a hint. Do you remember what I said? We look first in the book itself to find out if we can tell who the audience was supposed to be. Romans 1, 7 says to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. Basically, that means the Christians that are living in Rome, the church that is living in Rome. All right. Where is Rome? I already showed you, but did you know it was in Italy? Yes. Rome is in Italy. And so you can see Paul was in Corinth down in Greece, and he was writing to the church in Rome in Italy. This is really interesting because Paul says in Romans 1.13 that he had never actually visited the church of Rome, but he always wanted to. That he really, really wanted to get to visit the church in Rome. So he's writing them a letter kind of in advance kind of um, to go ahead and start that ministry in Rome before he could get there. That's really interesting because that also tells us he's writing people he doesn't know. So he probably has to give a lot of background information, and he does in the book of Romans. All right. So why did Paul write the book of Romans? Well, the main problem with the church in Rome was there was a lot of fighting going on between the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers. The Gentiles are the people who weren't Jewish, people like me. <laughs> so there was a lot of conflict going on between the Jews and the Gentiles in the church. And Paul wrote because he wanted to bring unity to the church so that they would praise God together. That's the main reason he wrote. And we can tell in Romans 15, verses 7 through 13, that's where he explains his purpose of writing this letter. I only put the verses 7 through 9 here, but you can read the whole thing on your own. Listen to what this says. It says, accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed. So that's the Jewish part. Now here's the Gentile part. And moreover, that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. And then Paul lists a bunch of um, scriptures from the Old Testament that show this was God's plan all along. That's the purpose of Romans. All right, so what should you listen for in the book of Romans? There's a few key things I want you to listen for. Number one, what is the consequence of sin? Sin is anything you think, say, do, or don't do that displeases God or goes against what God says to do. All right, so I want you to listen for, as you're reading and studying the book of Romans, what is the consequence of sin? And secondly, how can you be saved? Those are the two things to listen for while you're reading and studying the book of Romans. What is the consequences of sin and how can you be saved? So let's look really quickly at an outline of the book of Romans. This is just bird's eye view, big picture. All right. First, the gospel of God's righteousness, which is in chapter one, verses one through 17. Then he goes into God's righteous wrath against the sinners. That's part of the consequences of sin that you're listening for. Next is the saving righteousness of God. That's how can you be saved? Then we have the hope because of the righteousness by faith. Next is God's righteousness to Israel and the Gentiles. Remember that conflict that was going on? God's righteousness in everyday life. God's righteousness goes out through Paul's ministry. And finally, a summary of the gospel of God's righteousness. That is an overview of the book of Romans. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos that have to do with the book of Romans, which way, <laughs> check out this playlist right here. You also might like this video here. Thanks again for joining me, friends. I'll see you next time.